Those who practice magic arts that believe in flying carpets with a ring our prophets are not magicians. I repeat, Shamsi, when you call Jesus not being God, you are calling God a liar. Crucifixion or crucifixion? At many that's worse. Quote, the Muslims believe this categorical Quranic statement, Surah 4, 157 from God. Hence, he asks no questions and seeks no proof. But immediately, on the next page, he's calling the Christian to call their witnesses. In one breath, he said that we don't need any proof. We're not interested in giving you any. But however, we're going to press you for some. I'd like to thank everybody of the audience and uh, first of all we give glory to God through our, his son Jesus Christ. I would like to thank my brother Hudson for allowing me to assist him on, the, on this evangelist mission. I would also like to thank Soko Films um, for allowing us to use this platform to share our message and I'll read it for script in this case but it's essential I get this across because I'd be very touched by his attitude. He's a very amicable person and he's always full of smiles. He shows a kind of kind grace which um, is often lacking in this park Amen. and which we need to show recognition to. Yes. And I'd like to uh, appeal to the members of the audience that do watch his videos and entertain. Please watch the adverts because if independent filmmakers like this are not supported, um, so if he's by Patreon or PayPal, or whatever, please um, contribute. Uh, God will bless you in regards to whatever contributions you make. That is our belief, and uh, I know you appreciate our, our work. Uh, lastly, and uh, majorly, I'd also like to thank the audience and the commenters of these videos. Good and bad. Uh, good and bad. <laughs> which, uh, criticisms are important because yes. it helps us improve ourselves. And we like to thank you guys because you give us an idea of what the audience really wants to hear and also what direction we need to take um, in order to fulfill our evangelist mission. And um, we do hope that you actually listen to the word that we mentioned, that you just don't look at this as a gimmick of us um, trying to get our heads over. The Muslims are our brothers. They're not our enemies. You have to understand they are our brothers. Uh, they might not believe in what we believe in, but as Christians we accept everyone and we are trying to bring people to the gospel of salvation. We're doing the Lord's work, that is what we're trying to do. Um, sometimes we fall short of the standard that we feel, but for any success we do have, we give all glory to the Lord. All comments, very interesting, um, um, all positive or negative, or good or bad, positive or negative, are uh, yes, welcome. Um, it, it, it makes you realise why we're here. And um, I know I can be quite vocal and um, very, um, a bit animated but that's just kind of done out of passion but I also think it's very important and Bob has said this before it really is very important that Christians don't um, use an, an appearance of weakness and, and use it as an excuse of kind of being a Christian you know the Christian, uh, being a Christian is not weak or faith in Christ is not weak you know the very idea of suggesting that you must present a, 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 you must present yourself in a kind of weak way to appear to be some kind of Christian it's totally wrong you know what I mean you know, the scripture says um, um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and of a sound mind. And that must show, you know, so if it's really God in us, you know, then it would show. And any failings, as you said, will be on our part simply because you're not following the whole, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Not because it's not there. So I just want to make that clear. You know, Paul says, um, um, you know, you must confront anything that fr confronts itself with the gospel of Christ. And try to put yourself above or boast itself above. The, the, the knowledge of Christ, and that's what we're here to do. I mean, with good arguments, sound arguments, and apologetics and reasoning, but always um, 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 directing it back to the scripture. We'll say one reference point yeah. to Shamsi incident. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know at one point it was clown, and it became quite a big theme mm. of this subject. But it was um, looking at that Quranic narrative about the flying carpet, uh, which he has refuted today, which is going to be on another video, which we hope to bring him the information. Mm. But these are side distractions. This is not really our yeah. job here to do. Yeah. And as what I like about Shamsi, and I'll say this because I think it's good to give accolades. Mm. At least he shook a hand and he had a yeah. smile. And he has a bit of a, a nice personality, yeah, yes, yes, which yes. is uh, contradictory to some other people yeah. that are mm. a bit exuberant. Yeah. But. Um, before that, we had yeah. another presentation where we spoke about the issues of evangelism and dawah. Yes. And now you've seen that we've come across mm. some of these issues. Mm. We exposed some of the dawah tactics, just a refresh on, yeah, yeah. I think we did this yeah, yeah, a fortnight ago. Yeah, 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 it was um, quite, yeah, two um, weeks ago. And we, we noticed a kind of mm. uh, tandem um, 
analogy with the mm. Muslims that mm. they follow a, a kind of verbal jihad against mm. Christianity mm. using uh, Muhammad as the pillar of yeah. this and people like um, Amadida the Zakir Knight. Amadida, yeah. Zakir Knight, it's important to say. Amadida, Zakir Knight, and there's another guy. Shabir Ali? That's right. Shabir oh, Ali. wow, that's, that's a fantastic right. that's name. Right. Yeah, those three uh, are the ones. Shabir Ali is one of those yeah. that I like because yeah. he does have a kind Although of he is quite, yeah. intelligence. <laughs> yeah, he, does, yeah. he also knows how to manipulate yeah. the scripture and yeah. put a lot of lies. Yeah. But we're, mm. I think we're going to deal with those people's yeah. um, considerations at another time. Yeah. But we expose the falsehoods. I, I like to narrow things down because I like the audience to get sound bites. Mm. Falsehoods, misrepresentations, abnormal behavior, passive aggression, physical aggression, limited comprehension yeah, skills, yeah. and illiteracy. That is what we see directed from the Islamic theme, where you cannot read simple scripture that says, My Lord, my God when a disciple says mm. this and then you try and dispute with us that Jesus is Christ mm. well today we're actually going to do something um, very very straightforward mm. I would say and this is Islam is Antichrist and not of God and Allah is not the God of the Bible so we will have to confirm that Allah has to be who is known as the deceiver which is Satan and it might be very hard for Muslims to hear this and we know that it seems hard that we are attacking your religious belief but as a Christian we have to bear the truth so um, to, in order to support our mission we're going to use biblical texts, yeah. Quranic texts, Hadith, Tafsir, Fatwas and we'll provide definitions of what Christ is what the Antichrist is and reveal the nature of the enemy which is Satan so I would like Brother Hudson to please start off this mission and it's going to seem that I'm going to intercept you at verses so that we can define uh, Christ and I would think if you could read from Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved okay so now what is the Lord Jesus can you give me an, what would you say Jesus is who is Jesus well, if, to say he's Lord yeah well first of all the word Jesus means saviour yeah. okay that's what it means and um, we can refer to a uh, um, Luke chapter 1 um, verse around verse 27 okay. um, when the angel Gabriel came to Mary yeah. when he announced the birth of Jesus okay. he announced that Jesus' name said he will save these people from their sins yeah. so Jesus means saviour it's important as well that the, 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 the historical name of Jesus is Yahashua or, 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 that's a long Hebrew form or the short Hebrew form is Yeshua which is important because it means Yahweh saves or Yahweh salvation so that's what you see there in, in, in um, Luke 1 27 it said he will save these people from their sins um, angel Gabriel announcing to Mary and also in Matthew chapter 1 so in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1 it says that Jesus will save these people from their sins you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save these people from their sins okay so Jesus means Savior all right can I just add to this uh, before you go into the rest of the scripture Christ actually comes from the word Greek word Christos which means the anointed one or the chosen one this is the Greek equivalent of the word Messiah so Jesus means Messiah Christ means the Messiah and it's the Lord's human name given to Mary by the angel Gabriel in Luke chapter 1 verse 31 and Christ is his title signifying that Jesus was sent from God to be the king and deliverer and we can reference this also by using Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 and Isaiah chapter 32 verse 1 so Jesus Christ means Jesus the Messiah or Jesus the anointed like one so if you can continue the rest of the Romans okay right so Romans chapter 10 and continuing from verse 10 for with the heart of man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation yeah. we're basically saying to get our salvation yeah. that we believe that Jesus is God in the flesh yes. and that is what it is and we believe this with our hearts so this is what has given us our salvation and this is the message we as Christians are presented to to give to the rest of the world now it is that simple by accepting, I, like, right, uh, I would yeah. say the you go, go into yeah, explaining yeah. this yeah. so the audience can understand it in simplistic yeah, sure. terms. Okay, right, no, right. Good. Let's look at this. So, so let's go again from verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus yeah. and, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So he's basically saying, pronounce. You're pronouncing and announcing. Jesus is Lord. Okay. That's what saying. You're saying with your mouth. So let's say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Fantastic. That's what you're literally saying. So that's what we'll say. Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Announce it outwards. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. I don't really like Yeah, with the mouth. 
and yeah. believe in your heart so you believe you're going to now you believe what you're saying that's, that's faith. Faith. Just empty would you say that's so you, faith yes that's faith okay. yes that's faith so you're saying it and it mean and you mean it so you're announcing what you mean so the two go together jesus is lord and you mean you, got you believe in your saying. heart that jesus we're not lord. saying it we're yes. like, oh we believe in jesus he's yeah. called yasha but yeah. he, no. he escaped yeah. the uh, that is not no. believing jesus no. as lord no, no, okay no, no, no. Yeah, so we got a good definition yeah. that yeah. if i believe that um judas was put in the place yeah. on the cross yes. of jesus but i say oh i believe he's a prophet no. that's going to get no. me saved no okay no okay wrong. i needed wrong. to understand yeah. that so there yeah. have to be so there's an order okay there's an order there's a pattern okay i would like to push you up to verse 15 and the reason is because some people said that we have a very good audience together sure. right. and uh, I thought verse 15 will give the answer to those of the audience okay. because we're, we believe in our Bible yeah. so if we have a good um, rapport with each other sure. we don't believe that's from ourselves do no, you? No, so uh, verse 15 okay. and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things and the reference is Isaiah 52 and verse 7 wow so I didn't even know that it was from Isaiah yeah. so this shows the yeah. correlation of the Old Testament yes. with the New Testament yes. where people think that the gospels no. are totally separate Absolutely. but you have actually shown that mm. whatever we believe in is what all the prophets the 40 prophets yes. of the Bible yes. over three and a half thousand years yes. have actually receded yeah. so now we have defined what Christ is and I would really like you to explain to the audience because you have better eloquence what is Christ so we can move on to what is not Christ and okay. what is Antichrist okay. right okay right yeah. first of, okay well first of all Christ means anointed yes. it means anointed and now remember let, let's look at the, the term anointed from the Old Testament where it means there's a kind of formality to it so people would be, they'd, they'd be you know the priests would be anointed with oil so it means Christ is anointed so he's anointed to do something he's anointed for his mission remember and his mission was to save people from their sins let's look at a couple of scriptures to back them up Matthew chapter 1 18 now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise and this will help to answer the question when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost then Joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying Joseph thou son of David fear not to take unto thee Mary for thy wife because that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and she shall this is the verse key verse and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call him named Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins that is the pinnacle of our yes. faith yes. that only Jesus so now I think we've given our glory to our Lord and I'm going to use four verses just to complete this glory so we can tackle the more tricky question yes. of this Antichrist this evil yes. thing that is trying to distort the meaning of Christ so now so Jesus is God in the flesh fulfilling gospel prophecy I cannot just say this with rhetoric I have to give the evidence Malachi 3 1 I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple the messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come says the Lord Almighty so what would you say that is um, from definition that God is coming to his temple in Jerusalem yes and sending his messenger the Baptist yes okay am That's I right. wrong there no no you're not wrong <laughs> no, fantastic yeah. so I'll go to Isaiah 7 14 therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign the virgin will conceive and give a birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel yes, now this is 700 years before Christ yes. and now I'll go to Matthew yes. chapter 1 verse 23 the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they should call him Emmanuel which means God with us Praise I mean this is not something that I need to go back to primary school to learn no. God with us That's Emmanuel right. that yeah. is what it means Praise fulfilling the, the prophecy and John chapter 1 verse 14 the word of God which we all know mm. we go over this so many times John in Latin yeah. oh, John, 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 John 1 John 1 John 1 the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt well, among us that's plain with all yeah. glory so okay we don't need to go over this yeah. anymore those are the references yeah. Yeah. so now let's get into the more yeah. tricky yeah. intricate and more fascinating story of the antichrist uh first john chapter 1 verse 22 i would like you to read this let me just um because we're going to define who the antichrist is and reveal who this evil wicked shaitan is First John, chapter 1, verse 
chapter uh, first John chapter 2 verse 22 wow. right who that is a liar let's say this boldly no, say no, this boldly no, no. who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ he is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son yeah. he is Antichrist Allah. so verse 23 please continue whosoever denies the Son the same has not the Father but he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also now I'll repeat Allah. this first John chapter 2 verse 22 who is the liar Whoever denies Jesus is the Christ. Right. We have defined who Jesus Allah. Christ means. Jesus means God in the flesh. Right. So if you deny Jesus is the Christ, you are the Antichrist. Am an I anti wrong there? No, is you're this? right. Okay. You're a liar Christ and, and an Antichrist. Allah. Christ and the Son of. Wow, we have an angel must be speaking and the Son. Right. So Allah. whoever denies, so no one who denies the Son has the Father, which is Abba in yep. Hebrew yes. which is God Allah. and whoever acknowledges the Son That's has the Father also now what else can we read to back this up to define the Antichrist I'll say go to 1st John chapter 4 yes. verse 1 mm. dear friends do not believe every spirit but test the spirits yes. to see whether they are from God yeah. so now we are testing spirits because many false prophets hear this word false prophets have gone into the world and how are you testing them by what's been what they're saying what they're teaching and what they're preaching okay That's what That's so how you, you have to test them by what are they saying about jesus quite clearly who are they saying he is what does he mean that's how you have to test them but look test it. yeah look at the rest of the verses okay read, read on read, Shall I read to verse two yeah. thank and you explain why they need to be tested this is how you recognize the spirit of god Aye. okay how do we recognize the spirit of god every spirit that acknowledges that jesus christ has come in the flesh is Amen. of God. Can Amen. you explain that to yes. me? Yes, well, um, St. John 1 explains it again. Remember, it says, so Jesus the status of Jesus. He was with God before time and eternity. Yeah. He was God, and then he came into the world. You okay. Know? So he came into the world from eternity and came into a human form. So if I don't acknowledge he came to, what does that mean I am? Yeah. A liar and an antichrist. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not a liar, so I believe this rhetoric. And I will go to verse 3. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not of God. I mean, this is very self-explanatory, mm. but yes. uh, please. Right. Every spirit that, right. It's not of God. So who is it of? If it's not of God, who is it of? This is the spirit of the Antichrist, you which you have heard is even already in the world. You, dear children, are of God and have overcome them because the one that is in you is greater than the one of this world. Amen. So now I would like you to give me the definitions of 1 John 1 to 4 to 3 right. so that we understand yeah, sure. what the Antichrist is. Okay, okay sure. Uh, right. Let's, let's break it down go. again. Yeah. So he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many four prophets have gone out into the world. This is how we know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses, so that announces, every spirit that announces and pronounces that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh in the beginning was the word and that word became flesh if you announce that pronounce that confess it and believe it that's of god so that means the opposite is not so if you do that's of god you're of god if you don't that's not of god and you're not of god verse 3 and every spirit that confesses again announces and pronounces and believes that jesus is christ has come in the flesh so you say jesus is i'm going to interrupt you i'm playing yeah. dawa now sure. i have to play dawa yeah, sure. i'm doing a lamin interpretation <laughs> sure. to my god and your god okay yeah. so now i yeah my father to yeah, your sure. father yeah. or whatever he says the theatrics yeah so i'm doing the theatrics mm. i believe jesus is only a prophet i don't really believe that yes, but i'm going to say I I do. yeah so does that make me an antichrist yes you're oh, an antichrist so that means i'm an antichrist yes the scripture is quite clear doesn't so, matter how you feel about yourself oh, oh the scripture is quite really clear. Uh, yeah. i find that very <laughs> offensive brother <laughs> right. i'm offended by you well the scriptures offended you not me oh my scripture yeah oh, oh actually oh, god well, is offended I, i've acknowledged this scripture. is god's word yeah oh so yeah god that is, is not god the is spirit of you. god by me saying that yeah. no so, no wow so i should be in shock now yeah shock horror yes my dawah is wrong. Yes. It is not the spirit yes. of God. So what spirit am I using? The spirit of the Antichrist. So it's no good if you feel if you feel comfortable or you feel righteous or you, you feel well within your right to say that I love Jesus and he's only a prophet. It's not scriptural. God doesn't acknowledge that. Doesn't matter how good you feel about it. All this honor, you honor him in the wrong way. You have to honor Christ in the right way. Remember in St. John 5, um, um, Jesus said, you must honor the son the same way you honor the father. 
So let's look at these Muslims. They say they love God, they love Allah, but they're not loving Jesus the same way. So you've got to ask the question, how do you honor the Father? I would assume that every Muslim would say that they honor God, although he's not the Father, but that's any truth. But you know, the, the way they would say they would honor God with all their heart, mind and soul. That's what they say. They okay, say they you're a liar. To I'm going to bring out the <laughs> Dawah tiktiks. Sorry, I have to play devil's advocate sure. because we're not letting the Muslims yeah. uh, come in into this so that we get some... So I'm going to say a lie, but you know what? I'm going to quote the Quran for you. And this is chapter 9, verse 30. The Jews say Uzziah is the son of Allah. Do you know any Jew that says Uzziah is the son of Allah? No, that's very problematic, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's I, very problematic. In that same verse that denied the historical crucifixion of Jesus, it said that the Jews said we have killed the Messiah. That's problematic. The Jews are saying that we have killed the Messiah. They didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah. Which is actually the very reason they wanted okay. to kill him. Okay, so it was a part of his claim which led to them wanting to kill him. Okay, so let me question. And the Christians call Christ the son of Allah. That is a saying from their mouths. They imitate the unbelievers of old what they used to say. Allah's curse be on them. How deluded they are to turn away from the truth. Now the Quran explicitly from my own simple basic mm. comprehension is saying that Jesus is not the son of God yes that's so what, what does that make the Allah of the Quran Antichrist and a liar <laughs> Wow like his so, followers so it might be Allah's doing takia yes because he's the greatest of all deceivers yes as it says in the Quran this is not me yes. making this up yes. I mean I just read the Quranic verse yes but I can also say more because the verse ahead said fight those that do not believe in Allah mm. of the last day nor hold what is forbidden by Allah and his messenger nor acknowledge the religion of truth which is Islam yeah. so do we accept Islam as the religion of truth? No, we accept that as a religion and of why don't we expect it? because it goes against the Bible and more importantly it goes against the Bible and the biblical Christian faith in all of the key areas but just one area alone is enough Sen um, Surah 4, 157, that's it everything falls down there you mean everything falls down there it's not only denying you know biblical doctrine it's denying history now it's we oh, sorry yeah. I, I i know we're going to be accused of being liars and i i think integrity is very important on the sabbath day of the lord mm. thou shalt not bear false witness exodus 20. so i'm going to give you another quranic verse and this is about um what allah he is a bit confused he confuses me the messiah son of mary was not a messenger um it was only a messenger it was was not bottom messenger sorry oh, yeah. uh, different translations uh, now right. you see so yeah. mm. this is the problem when you look at the pictorial and the about eight different yeah, and they right. complain about our bible yeah, having many, right. no, but they have a, they're not so consistent. now all of us christians they're not have a different so it's mm. not consistent mm. um, no, it's consistent when they say that jesus is it's not, not for the messenger it's yes. not consistent That's in every language. and his, his mother was a supporter of the truth but the, we've already mm. i mean you've defined allah as being a lie they yeah. used to eat food mm. Uh, wait, uh, okay, we, I've heard that it's that verse, you know that how can Jesus be God because he eats food? Yeah, yeah, I Jesus. found the Quranic verse, yeah, it's Quran oh, 5 oh. verse oh. Read it. What 75 what it Now I'll read it from the beginning <laughs> so everyone knows The Messiah son of Mary was not but a messenger other messengers mm. have passed before him and his mother was a supporter of the truth they both used to eat food look how we make clear to them the signs they look then oh, look no. <laughs> how they are deluded. Now, when you talk about pronoun confusion and, yeah. um, mm. you know, I don't know what the Arabic was initially, mm. but he can't be God because he didn't eat food. Yeah. So that's where they that's get this where from. Get that's from. where it gets mm. from. It's Quran 5 verse 75. But we're not going to get into these no. immature, mm. unconvincing right. arguments. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this is, so we need to go to the crucifixion, I would okay. say. What well, let's, well say? let's first of all deal with what the Quran said. Okay, said then that, I'll yeah, read the Quran yeah, read and then first. you will give yes, the, yeah, all the answers. Yeah, yeah, because so I really don't yeah. like reading the script, but Quran 4, 157 to 158. Mm. That's chapter 4, verses 157 to 158, or ayats as mm. they call yes. them. They're saying indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, or Ye the messenger of Allah, mm. which we don't agree with. Mm. And they did not kill him, nor crucify him. But another was made to resemble him, and indeed those who differ over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except following an assumption. So the crucifixion is yes. assumption yes. according to yes. what yes. I right. can discern. They have no knowledge except the assumption, I've gone over that, and they did not kill him. For certain, rather Allah raised him, body and soul, yes. to himself, mm. and he is in the heavens, Jannah. Mm. And ever is Allah exalt, blah, blah, blah. I don't exalt Allah. 
So because so there was a million and one problems there, quite literally, just in that verse alone. But let's just take you know lots of problems. You know what called the appearance, blah blah blah, all these kind of stuff. But let's just look at the verse on its own. Now we had a cloud of witnesses against that verse. The surah has taken its time to find one verse. That's one verse. I don't know of any other okay. or in anywhere else. One verse they've used. The Quran. It has nothing else to say. Imagine that. A historical light, a biblical light, light on every level in one verse. They didn't go any further. And in Surah 42, about verse 1, it claimed that the Quran is a detailed account of all things. Oh. Is that a detailed account? <laughs> is, that, is that a detailed well, account? Well, I had a problem yeah. actually right. reading the yeah. script. Yeah. That is not a detailed account. No, no. Let, let, let's what do you mean it's not a detailed account? It's not a detailed account of an it historical event. It doesn't make sense you just to said, anyone You just said that Jesus didn't die, that's it. Don't need to go Somebody was in this place. And I'm supposed to be convinced of that. You haven't fleshed it out. The reason why mm. he didn't die, you just said he simply, you just said an historical event. There's not event. even a tafsir on there or anything like that. Nothing. There is nothing. Nothing. I'm waiting for someone to bring me one. There is nothing else in all of the tafsir, the hadith, the sunnah, the Quran, nothing. That's nothing. it. One verse. Now we have a cloud of witnesses in, in the Gospels. Let's go to all of the Gospels, all of the, the penultimate chapters. So, St. Matthew chapter 27, Mark chapter 15, Luke chapter 23, John chapter 20. All of them give a detailed history of the crucifixion of Christ and what it led up to. It's historical. Who was involved, Pontius Pilate, yeah. the whole Roman Empire, a mixture of the, he, uh, uh, the Hebrews, the Jews, and the, and the Romans. A whole history of not only that it happened, but what happened, the process. You know, actually, when you look at the details, Christ went backwards, for, backwards and forward to Rome, to the priest and Pontius Pilate, about six times. Sent him back, Pilate sent him back, Pharisees sent him back, about six times. So you have detailed accounts in all of those scriptures, what, not only that it took place, but what happened. The Quran comes along 600 years later, this is the key, 600 years later, and just single-handedly said no, none of this happened. And this is from an account that's supposed to give details of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So that's on one level, so on the biblical level alone, we can say that's why it's Antichrist. Because it's coming and denying the centrality of the Christian faith. But not only that, if you, you can put aside the Quran, I keep saying this is important, and you can put aside the Bible, and we can look at history and say what it says about Jesus' crucifixion. And there's a unanimous agreement that Christ died. We're not talking about resurrection. We can leave that. When we're talking about with Jesus, can God, I just, just historically? You. One, sure. one second. Yeah. Before you go on, you made you said Christ. Yeah. So that so who was crucified? Was it the Messiah? And then continue. Yes, your the narrative. Messiah was crucified. But the historical Jesus, be clear, it was a historical Jesus who was the Messiah was crucified. That word that came into human form, which made him a historical being on planet Earth in time and space. You said word. Crucified. Whose word? No, the, the word in the, the beginning, word. the word, yeah. the word of God. Yeah, yeah, the word of God, the living word of God that was in the beginning that took on human form. The fle and this is another key point: the flesh died. So when that word that is eternal that took on human form, took on a human body, that died. The body, not God. This is simple to understand. As said, you know, when human beings die, your spirit's gonna die. Yeah. No, your, your, your body's body. going to die, sorry, not your, your body's spirit, gonna die, yeah. your body's yeah. going to die. The flesh dies, it goes in the ground, decays, not your spirit. Muslims know this, they agree with this. Yeah. That when I die as a human being, my, my body's going to die, not my spirit. Mm. So you can understand that, but you have a problem with understanding, not understanding, but you don't have a problem with understanding that it's the flesh, the flesh body of Jesus died. So can I ask you a question sure. as a Christian? Yeah. So I as a Christian yeah. have to believe my Messiah died on the cross for me. Yes. But well, why would he have to die on the cross for me? Because I need to understand why my Messiah would die on the cross for me. Well, first of all, we have to talk about sin here now, and we have to talk about Adam and Eve. Okay. The Bible makes it quite clear that humanity has fallen. That's what it's done in Adam and Eve. And that, so, so we've got two human beings, and it's important, Adam and Eve who sinned, and that sin is generated. So we're, so, so we're not talking about little baby sinning. That's not where it comes from. It's just like if a mother's sick. If a mother's sick with cancer, the, the cancer or whatever illness, it may be transferred to the child. Nobody would suggest that the child carried out any actions like smoking or eating unhealthy yeah. before it was born to, 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 to inherit that illness from its mother. Nobody would suggest that. Everybody would understand that. That this child was born sick because of certain actions of the mother, intentionally or unintentionally. Nobody would suggest or even think for a minute that the child must have smoked if the child has cancer or some kind of illness or AIDS or whatever. This is absurd. You know, you, you'd relate that back to the mother. And likewise with Adam and Eve. You mean the sin were generated. The first man and woman, who God created in his image, you know, at one point, at somewhere along the line, sinned against God. And sin is disobedience. I quite simply disobeyed God. So let's try and make it into yes. a simple, yeah. simple man's term. Yes. Because I know we live in a time that people have mm. very short memory mm. and they want sound bites. 
So the death of the Messiah on the cross. Yes. What is the essential? The death element? of the Messiah is essential to take away that sin that could not otherwise be removed. Remember in the Old Testament there was a the, basically there was a repeated event of stuff, almost like a 365 cycles. The priest had to find a, a, a basically a spotless lamb, an animal, a four-footed beast, and this was repeated every year. What we would call a 365-day cycle. So that we do it now in 365-day time, in our understanding, they would go and do it again. And that's what it says. So he said that repeat could not. In Hebrews, it said that repeated um, ritual could never take away sins, and it makes quite clear from the Old Testament and in the New Testament that a blood sacrifice was needed, okay. and that blood sacrifice was beyond any kind of priest. That blood sacrifice because he himself was eternal, and this is in Hebrews, you know, and sinless, you know what I mean? He's the eternal priest, the eternal priesthood, because the other priests die. Remember, Hebrews make that clear. Because priests keep dying and they keep passing away because they're not, you know, for So you're saying the blood yes. sacrifice yes. of yes. Jesus yes, the blood sacrifice. Yes, atones said, for our yes. sins. He said, without the shedding of blood, there is no sacrifice, there, there is no atonement mm -hmm. for sin. Hebrews, quite clear. So blood has to be spilt. So this shed. is part of salvation. Yes. Without understanding this, yes. you are de destined to what? What yes. would happen to you if you don't believe that uh, the blood sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, you'll be lost. Damned, lost. as the Bible Damned. puts it. So yes. what does that damnation it's mean? It, it means that um, you will not only die physically, but also spiritually and separated yeah. from God. The Separate. Bible calls it separation from God. That means you will not be in the presence of God. So and anything that's not in the presence so of God. So will I have my 76 virgins? Because I might be thinking of taking. No. I'm thinking about an eternal erection. <laughs> oh, <laughs> pardon me for that. Uh, there no I, I wouldn't want to see my <laughs> female relatives with that. But there is no 76 virgins okay. at all. That's not even biblical anyway. All right. Yeah. So at all. It's not biblical anyway. But even if that were the condition, you would not see it based on. So. No. To summarize you, you're yeah. saying the death of the Messiah is and essential. His blood, okay. And the. And his blood shed yes. on the cross yes. is what is atoning for my yes, sin when sin. I do something wrong and I say, Lord, forgive me. That's right. It is that sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ yes, on, the, on cross, the cross on that Calvary, for my sin. Yes, outside of Jerusalem, uh, nothing on else? a dumpy hill. Is there anything else? Yeah. Can I do many good deeds? No, to go, uh, no. No. But no, I'm being nice. I, I gave a woman some charity today. That's she very was, good. But okay. you do know that giving away money doesn't make you good. You can be a very really? bad person. I, oh, be, I was I, nice. I walked an old lady across the street I could be A gangster can do that. A, gang, a criminal can do that. I can cut somebody's throat uh, and then go and I do don't want to engage my brain with too right. much um, right, exactly. hard right. things. But okay, I did yeah. something else good. I cleaned the um, kitchen. Doesn't mean you're good in there. Doesn't mean that. How does it? Tell me how it means you're good in there because you handed me some money. Um, I didn't. I haven't watched porn since I've become a Christian. How does that it means mean, I'm a good guy. How does it mean you're good in there? Tell me about some of the things you did wrong. Okay, you're announcing all the things that you did good. Give me free something that for every good thing that you said you did, you can find a, a, a bad one that you did, but you won't tell me. Uh, I, I I believe I'm a good guy because I I'm proclaiming I'm a good guy. Right. Okay. Because so, I, I've done right. my five pillars of but my. But it's faith. not in your image, and that's what Scripture makes clear as well. It's not about what you think; it's about what God thinks of you. In good sight, you're not a good guy. So Scripture said nobody's good. We've plain, all fallen short. We've all sinned. Playing devil's advocate, we yes. come up. What, that is the grace. We're yes. saved by the grace yes. of God, yes. which saved has been yes. paid by, grace. by the yes. death on the but cross. But let's be clear. Yeah, the blood has to be spilled. That's clear. Without right. shedding of blood, without spilling of blood, put it how you want. Blood can be has to be spilled. And it's the has blood of be. Christ. Yeah, that, that atones. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to go into something else, and I just wanted to, and this is to brief up the Messiah thing. Mm. This is the Islamic definition of Messiah, and it's Fatwa number one one eight. 919 meaning of Mesha, which is Messiah, fatwa date Rabbi al, al Awal 12 1430 8 um, 3 2009. The word Messiah in the Quran refers to Isa, who we know as Jesus. Yes, yeah. And the scholars stated many reasons for being named as the Messiah. So let's just see if they actually agree with our Christian narrative yeah, sure. rather than. Yeah. It is said that the name the Messiah is because his feet were flat. Mm -hmm. So do we see Messiah as the feet being flat? Is no. That, uh, does that sound a bit uh, comical? No. Am I, am I laughing? Cool. I mean, this is a fact or number. No, I'll give you the. Yeah, so this is not me making this no, up. It sounds very okay, comical. So flat foot. Yeah. And it is, uh, so <laughs> this is the second not, definition. Mm, yeah. It is said that he was named the Messiah because his feet were flat. We've gone through that. The arch was which was flattened, this is a parenthesis, that the entire soul rests upon the ground. Do you have flat feet? Could I be the Messiah if I have flat feet? No. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's, well, I do have an art, so I can't that, That's be. not the biblical condition. And it's also said he's named that because he came out of his mother's womb anointed with oil. And you know, <laughs> earlier on in the... I know, this is, sounds very crazy and I'm trying mm. not to laugh. Mm. 
but I'm doing this so mm. I actually have some integrity. Mm. And I see our brother here has got a nice smile, and <laughs> it's a prize winning smile over there. But um, you mentioned the anointing in the Old Testament, yes. and you're very good with the Old Testament yeah. knowledge. Yeah. And what was the anointed like when the kings? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. When the, when when, the, when the king was when the king was going to anoint like a priest or, or, for, or for prophethood or for priesthood or for kingship, then literally anointed, called them forth. You I mean it's almost like a ritual if you want, want a better word, and anointed them with oil. So they could say that the anointing yeah. Yeah. of, of uh, Messiah here, anointed from birth, has a symbolic meaning with the. I'm just saying, yeah. playing like devil's advocate yeah, with, sure. the, with the um, mental gymnastics yes. that we get in here. Yes. And this is the third definition. Yes, of course. It is mm. also said that he was named the Messiah because whenever he wipes a person over mm. with a disability, that person becomes cured. And it is said that the Messiah means as Siddiq, the truthful one. So they say that um, Jesus is a truthful mm. one. Mm. So hear this, Muslims. Your uh, your fatwa says that Jesus is a truthful one. Mm. So what did Jesus say about the truth? And you being a Christian, you will give me this definition. Jesus said he is the truth. The truth. Definite article. And Jesus the says, way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thanks. And you so, shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So I'm not hoodwinking here. No. And I'll repeat this again. And he's called the Messiah because it means as Sadiq, the truthful one. Mm. So their own narrative mm. is saying that Jesus is the truth. Yes. And what is the truth that Jesus is trying to give us? The truth that Jesus is trying to give us is that no man can come unto the Father but through him. That's the truth. In order to know God and have a relationship with God, this is the natural of it, you have to come through Jesus. Because he made that way through his sacrifice, death on the cross. This is clear. This is the gospel in a nutshell. As we will look at that, the gospel in a nutshell is in 1 Corinthians 15. That's the gospel in a nutshell. So who is this Jesus of the Quran? Because if we're trying to define if we're trying to define Christ, yeah. I think we have to look at the false Christ. Chapter 11, verses 3 to 8. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning. Who is the serpent? The serpent is Satan in the form he appeared in the garden. Thank you. It's quite simply Satan and your, in disguise. Your minds may not know. Somehow be led astray from the sincere and pure devotion yes. to Christ. Yes. So saying devoted to Christ, that means being devoted to God. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's Thank right. Thank you. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus Amen. we have preached, or if you receive a different spirit yes. other than the spirit you Amen. have received, that's right. or a different gospel that's right. from the so one you have accepted, that's right. so those are three points, that's right. yeah? That's right. <laughs> on, on and you put up with it easy enough, I do not think I am least in fear. So can you explain what that yes. means? Well, first and foremost, it's important to say that there is another Jesus. Wow. And there is another spirit and there is another gospel. Now let's look very briefly at Islam. This is what happened. You know, the Jesus that they're preaching is another Jesus. Yeah. The spirit that they're saying came to Muhammad or Gabriel through the spirit is another spirit. The message that results from that is another gospel. This is almost an unholy trinity. So you see the connection here. Oh, so the, the, the Quran says that um, Angel Gabriel, well, you know, we're, we're, really doesn't, but anyway, you know, it says that spirit, we, we, we're to assume that it's Angel Gabriel, you know, that, that delivered this message to Muhammad, completely unannounced, this person, but however, you know, Wait, Angel Gabriel, sorry, yeah. I am going to be rude, right. I don't like interrupting you sure. because your rhetoric, you said Angel Gabriel, yeah, um, I, I found it very striking hadith, and I want to bring this up before you go on, and it's about this Angel Gabriel, because what we're trying to do is now break down what this Islam is and who their God is yeah. that they dispute. And um, I saw this uh, Sahir and I found it very, very uh, conflicted. Sahir al Bukhari, mm. number two, um, book two, verse 225, or uh, number 225, narrated by Jundab bin Abdullah. Mm. Gabriel did not come to, Jibril did not come mm. to the Prophet for some time. And so one of the Quraysh women said, His Satan has deserted him. So came the divine revelation by the forenoon and by night, when it is still your Lord, and it's got bracket, O Muhammad, has neither forsaken you nor hated you. Mm. So is that the gable of our Bible that you... No, not at all. Okay. So this Koresh woman, this is not me mm. making this up. This is their own hadith, saying your Satan had deserted you. What am I supposed to think about this as a Christian? Mm. Well, you're supposed to have no work with your food for water of darkness. And also, oh, okay. very importantly though, um, and this is the key, um, God does not contradict himself that way. God would not do this simple thing. Think about this. God would not um, send the angel Gabriel to Mary 
and announce the birth of Jesus and then 600 years later send the same angel Gabriel delivering a different message. Okay. That would make a contradiction of God. You're attacking God here. God is being attacked here by that assumption. You're saying that God is contrary to himself. So you're saying that Gabriel actually came to the mother of Mary? Yeah, that's what we're, I mean, that, that's, that's Islamic, that's, that's the assumption no. in there. Even though angel Gabriel isn't really mentioned, but you know, we're to understand that um, it's angel Gabriel that delivered this message to... to, to I didn't want to get into yeah. tackle this Quranic verse, mm. but the angel Gabriel is actually considered the Holy Spirit in the Quranic verse. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, which yeah. people yeah. are not aware of. Yeah. I can bring that up in citation yeah. later. Mm. But what we're trying to do now, we've talked about the Christ, what the Messiah mm. is. We've defined what it is from the Christian perspective, mm. which is simply God in the flesh yes. on earth. That yes. is what Jesus Christ, the yes. Messiah. His death on the cross is our way to salvation. Yes. Now we've also decide, um, defined what Messiah is mm. in the Islamic context, which is flat foot, anointed yes. by birth, and what was the other crazy? Oh, the truthful yeah. one, yeah. which I find yeah. very astonishing. Yes. So that means we need to believe the account of Jesus, mm. that he's our way of salvation. Yeah. But I go into Quran uh, chapter 109. Uh, a lot of Muslims try and uh, talk to me mm. and they say that I conflict them. Mm. And I find them that they're not actually listening to me mm. and they're being patronizing. And I think they are actually insulting my intelligence. Mm. I'm an adult and I, I can think for myself. Mm. But when your Quran tells me this in uh, Surah 109, verse 1, say, oh, unbelievers, are you a believer in Allah? Me, myself? No. Yeah, I'm asking you this no, question. I don't believe So that. he's an unbeliever in Allah. I don't believe in Allah. So say all unbelievers. Mm. I do not worship what you worship. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's Muhammad's words or yes. is that Allah's words? Yeah, I don't know right, if yeah. Allah's worshipping someone else. Mm. I, I, because it's the eternal word of Allah, but a man's... Yeah. It, it sounds like a human mm. Neither do you worship what I worship. Yeah, right. so, so I am not worship what they yeah. worship. Nor will I worship the things that you worship. Nor are you going to worship him who I worship. I'm never so going to worship him. There's an open confession of difference here. To you, your religion, yeah. Yeah. and to me, my religion. Yes. Um, what does this defiance send you to in the eternal, on Judgment Day? What will happen to you if you follow this narrative? Um, you'll be lost. You'll be lost. Biblically, you mean speaking. Uh, yes. If I was exactly. a Muslim following yes. this narrative, yes. what would it mean? Yes. You'll be lost because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So what would that loss be? I mean, will I go to my Jannah and see my no, virgins no, no, and means, have no, my no, eternal, eternal erection? It means, it, means, it means eternal damnation. Eternal okay. damnation. Away from the presence of God. So that means cast into the lake of fire and brimstone That's with right. the devil, the Antichrist That's right. and his angels. That's exactly right. Now, um, I know I've taken some uh, seed into this. Now Muslims can tell us, no, 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 we believe there's an Antichrist. Mm. He's called the Dajjal. Mm. Now, what do you have to say about the Dajjal? Well, it's, it, it doesn't tally with the biblical um, the description of the Antichrist. And this is the problem. You know, so, so what you have is, this is important, glad you asked actually, because what you have is, you have certain um, um, frame of references where the names are the same. So the Bible mentioned the word Messiah, Quran mentioned Messiah, Bible mentions um, um, Christ, um, um, the uh, Quran mentioned Christ, but not meaning the same thing. It's not enough to use the word, it has to mean the same thing. It's the same when they say Jesus was born of a virgin, but in the Quran, how that comes about by the word be is not the same. So I have saying, to ask you, you know, very important, yeah. you said it's not the same thing. Yeah, words so are being used, but they're not. Now, yeah. we have Messiah defined by different prophets, yeah. that's what you're saying. Yeah. And the Quran has its own one prophet. Yes. And how many prophets is that one prophet going against? according to biblical scripture oh well just um the, 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 if you're talking about you're just talking about like the biblical writers we're talking about 40 40 different authors of the Bible. okay so uh, so we have one prophet yeah, one yeah. man called muhammad going against 40, going against different, 40 yeah. different prophets but literally more in terms of how many people more. but yeah but if you're just talking about biblical writers about 40 different authors and his alone. definitions are totally contradictory to totally contradictory the, yeah so who so is that, should we, i say that that one man is right and 40 men we're looking at an mm. audience mm. Uh, so, so let's just say we're going on the court case. Yes, yes, absolutely. Should I take one man's testimony over 40 men? Well, the that question, actually, yeah. yeah, the question you ask is, would that work in court if we want to do it this kind of legal way, or even just in a? Remember, the scripture says, "Bring your proof and bring your by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established." Okay. So the way of Islam is on one man. The way of Islam is on one man. So every time Muslims say we don't believe your account. Paul was lying, Paul wasn't there to begin with. We don't believe the self disciples, they went, they didn't really write these scriptures. They're going against a crowd of witnesses. This is what I'm saying. You're saying I don't believe left, right, and center of what all these people are, that, that were there. They weren't really there. They got an account for everybody. The 12 disciples weren't really there, or they were lying, or they misunderstood. 
Paul was a rogue who, who dipped into the Christian faith and manipulated it. So they, you know, cancelling out a cloud of witnesses. Imagine going into court and doing that. You know, imagine. So let's let's look at this historically. You know, because what we get in Corinthians is five. You can get a total alone of 513 witnesses because Paul says over 500. So that can literally mean 500. One, two, three. It could have been 510. So we know that there was over 500 witnesses. Add to that the 12 disciples and add Paul alone what we can identify is 500 given allowances is 530 witnesses against one man and islam would have they, they, they go through them stage by stage and give you a reason as to why they you know the bible can't be believed with these accounts because they weren't really written the writers were anonymous against one man and they're happy to rest on one man an illiterate man so called who had a revelation in a cave so think about what you, so just imagine going into court with that you know 500 witnesses turn up and say yeah we saw jesus die and one guy turned up and says he'd be run out of court one guy turned up and said no they're lying those guys are lying you know that jesus didn't die they're lying i know jesus didn't die they're lying come on you know if, if you're looking at legal or even on the ground even here now let's take those 513 people let's let's take a scenario in speaker's corner that 513 people today said it's raining it's raining today at speaker's corner and come this day next week one guy turned up and said no last week that is this week it wasn't raining who would you believe come on this is this is absurd so we're talking about on a biblical level we're talking about what the bible says about in terms of how it is important to have witnesses and also what the legal system says in terms of how it's important to have witnesses and what common sense would quite simply tell you what, how it's important to have witnesses now i'm playing the dawah again and i'm interrupting you because i know sure. that you're very passionate and you got this very um constricted in the right what manner the Bible is corrupted. Now this is the argument that would come up in this. They'll say, oh, that 40 accounts are lies. But now this is why, because I've got the verse opened up. Mm. And I'm going to say, no, the 40 witnesses are correct. I mean, the 513, mm. you're saying, mm. and the 40 authors of the Bible yeah. are correct. Because our book tells us that it's not corrupted. Because it says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18, For I testify unto any man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book, mm. if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Mm. Now, if you say that the Bible is corrupted, that means you're saying the Almighty God does not have power to protect the book. Yes. And verse 19 says, Jesus if Jesus And if any that. man Jesus shall take that. away from the Jesus words of this book, that. this prophecy, God shall take away from him the part of his way in life, of eternal life. And I like the way that we somehow have invoked the jinns yeah. in this area to try and conflict the story of Christ. So the Bible isn't corrupted. There are no. other verses we can yes. point. Uh, well, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, let's look at that on several levels. First of all, it isn't. But first of all, even the Quran itself doesn't give this allowance that this book is corrupted. The Quran, time and time again, directs Muslims to the previous scriptures. Now let's let's go back at the time. If at the time the Quran is direct, let's go back to the time when it's saying that you know read the previous scripture before you. They obviously existed then. So let's let's assume that they were lost. Okay, they're lost now. Let's give them the bed. Play devil's advocate. Where we are now, the Bible, the the, the, the scriptures scripture are lost. But at the time they certain devil's advocate. But at the time they certainly weren't lost because you're being referred to them. Now there's no way I can refer you to a book that doesn't exist. If I tell you to go to Dylan Bookshop and get a book that doesn't exist, it'd be futile. First of all, you go and find it doesn't exist. And you know, it wouldn't take long before you realize I was either conning you or I was mistaken. So at the time, it's obvious that it existed. The question to be asked is, in the interim, when did it get lost? What I'm saying is the Quran doesn't even allow for this. That these scriptures that existed that were the word of God got lost. The Quran clearly doesn't allow for that. Muslims are making this up. They're making this up against their own Quran. They're going against their own Quran. The Quran says time and time and time again in multiple places. Multiple. As a matter of fact, I checked from chapter 22 to chapter 23 it says it non-stop every single chapter alone from chapter 2 to 22 non-stop it says in various ways that this previous script has come to confirm these previous scriptures all over the place it also makes clear that no none can change Allah's words it says this I've got the references now none can change Allah's words no change can there be to Allah's words so if that's the case how did previous scriptures get lost so the Quran is either contradicting itself lying against itself or the Muslims are okay but I learned one thing from my Muslim brothers and I know we're going a bit off tangent but we're going to get back on. Now Genesis chapter 15 verse 4, if you can open Genesis chapter 15, Muslims claim to us that Abraham, um, Abraham or they call Ibrahim mm. was a Muslim. Yeah. Um, read Genesis well, chapter 15 verse 4. And behold the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be thine heir but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be so thine heir. So the word heir. of the Lord came to 
uh, Abraham. Yes. Now read verse 6, please. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and he committed it to him for righteousness. In Galatians 4. Now, you see, a lot yeah. of Christians don't yeah. know our Bible. Yeah. And this is why I needed to bring this up. The word of God came to Abraham. Yes. He got the gospel. Yes. And he was a Christian. And that's what Paul says. Yes, and Paul says this. And people do not understand this part of the right. Bible. He was not a Muslim. Yes. We can confirm this because that was from the Torah yes. given to uh, Moses. Yes. And this is why I wanted you. So this completes that the scripture has not been corrupted. That the word of God and you and we can always go back into this because Lamin loves this verse. Mm. John chapter yeah. where we In always, the beginning was the word uh, and the word uh, was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. That same, same word that was with God in the beginning that was God took on human form. 114 and became flesh. So God came to earth. From the discussion so far, we've confirmed who the Messiah is. Mm. That Jesus is um, the Son of God, who is God, one with God. Mm. We've also confirmed what the Antichrist is. So what is this Antichrist? Um, because I would like to get us to try and conclude mm. on that manner to okay. like different shapes. Okay. So Islam is an Antichrist religion. Yes. I would actually go and ahead. One? Yeah. Uh, you will sure. complete this. Yeah, sure. But Islam to me is actually the religion of the Antichrist yes. in the book of Revelations. Yes. The religion of Satan that is actually being put on this, established on this earth. And when you look at the crescent moon and the star and look at the old gods of the past, the sun god and the moon gods mm. of the past, the, which have been throughout the ages, yes. the religion of the Sabians, who in the Quran are said to go to heaven, mm. and the Sabians that killed Job, who was the oldest prophet of the Bible. Mm. So what is this Antichrist? Why is it um, being there to blind the nation? Well, let's see why it's Antichrist. And let's okay. do it very succinctly. This is why Islam is Antichrist. This is why. This is it. Who is a liar but he that, we did this already. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He's Antichrist, it denies the Father and the Son. Very specifically, Allah has no partners. He has no son, he has no daughter, the Quran says, no associates whatsoever. Allah is not a father to any. But the Quran actually says Allah has daughters. If yeah, you look Allah, at the Quran yeah, of course, Allah, Uluza and Aminat. There you go. So we yeah. know that Allah does not have son, but he has, but he has daughters. But he has daughters. <laughs> so are we agree. Now, I have to say this because mm. That means that Allah is not the God we worship. No, not at all. Okay, so... And I tried to make that clear a few weeks ago when I said it's not an Abrahamic religion on that basis. Okay. It's not... Sorry, go on. No, carry on. No, no. Uh, no, I'm just saying on that basis, because it's very important. It's not an Abrahamic religion, as far as I'm concerned, on that basis. So how many prophets do we use to accept the uh, knowledge of our religion? How many prophets do we work on? Well, there's several, because we've got the 12, main, we've got the 12 major prophets. You know, just what we have, we've got the 12 major prophets, yeah, isn't it? It's about 12, isn't it? And then there's some of the so-called, you know, minor prophets which is about six or seven okay so we're talking about 14 15 so just what we have on the face of the but on yes. the face of the bible yes. we have around 40 prophets that will actually determine um who god is and most of them had a relationship with the lord would you say yes. like prophet david had a relationship with the lord yes. prophet solomon had a relationship with the lord uh, uh, Malachi had a relationship with the Lord. Isaiah had a relationship with the Lord. Yes, um, uh, which other one? Moses, Abraham. David, oh, like we've seen, him? Jesus yeah. had come to Abraham yes, yes. in the Bible, like uh, from Genesis. So we know the prophets that have had a relationship with the Lord. Yes. But did the, the prophet of Islam have a relationship with God? No. Did he meet God? No, no. Islam says God is unknowable. This is clear. God is unknowable. God is not known. God actually, the, the God of Islam actually reminds me of the situation in um, Acts chapter 17, where Paul found some guys in Athens saying to the unknown God, remember? And he approached him and said, let me introduce you to this God that you talk about that you don't know. And he began to explain who God is on Mars Hill. This is what Islam very much sounds like. It's an unknown God. They're dabbling or engaging with a God that's not known because Allah does not take on human Allah's never come to earth. As a matter of fact, Allah stopped speaking 1400 years ago. He spoke to Muhammad one time and then he disappeared. Allah doesn't interact with human beings. He doesn't come to earth and nor does he speak to them. He spoke to Muhammad once and we got the so-called Quran and then that's it. Ask him now. Allah doesn't speak. He hasn't spoken for 1400 years. If he ever spoke at all, it was 1400 years ago. Okay, so now I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to define who Allah is. And this is what Allah says. Allah Apostle says, the most awful name in Allah's sight on the day of resurrection will be that of a man calling himself Malik al-Amlak, the King of Kings. 
Sahir Bukhari, book 73, Hadith 225. So Allah hates the King of Kings on resurrection. Now, we needed to prove that our, our God is different from the God of the Muslims. So I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither the image, neither received the mark on their foreheads. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So which religion has beheaded Christians? Islam. <laughs> Islam. Still is. Still is. Still is. So this is actually fulfilling biblical prophecy when ISIS were beheading Christians on the shores of Tripoli. Yeah. So we've actually seen a biblical prophecy of the word that has been corrupted actually be fulfilled by our Muslim brothers. So Muslims believe that when Jesus, Isa, comes back, he's going to break the cross and kill the pigs. Yes. And so now, if the Muslims believe that Jesus is going to come to noonday prayers in Damascus, which I find is one of the most exciting Islamic stories, I can imagine a guy, he's got two angels and he's holding on to them, and he lands on the prayer and he does his Allah Akbar. Uh, now, I know you're not trying to laugh, but I wanted you, because we're going to reveal to Christians part of the Bible that they don't really know about. And I'm going to uh, recite Revelations chapter 15, and I want you, I'm going to read, I want you to pick up uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 1 to 43. And we're, we're not going to read the full verse for good reason. Hey, hey, don't but, uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 32. And this is what is a biblical prophecy. Revelations chapter 15, verse 2. And every Christian should read this verse. And the Deuteronomy verse, which is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 to 43. Revelations 15, verse 2. And I saw what looked like glass blowing and fire standing beside the sea. Those who have seen and been victorious over the beast and the image and the number of the name. This is Jesus has judged the enemies. They held harps with them and they sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. So when the angels are coming with Jesus, now the Islamic Jesus is coming down to a noon in Damascus, but the Jesus we're talking, when he's coming down, he's singing the song, the angels are singing what? The song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Now the song of Moses is in the Bible, it's in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 1 to 43, it's a very long song. So it was from the beginning? Well, are you going to read the whole verse? No, no, what do you, no, 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 just read some of it, from the beginning. Yes. Give 32, Deuteronomy 32, give ear, O ye heavens, is that right? Yes. And and I will speak and hear, O earth, by the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will punish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is a rock, his work is perfect, but all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Amen. Now, you've read, I, I like the verses that you picked up, so you can see God's judgment. Yes. Do you know how important the Song of Moses was? No. Shall I tell you yeah, why? Do. Because if you turn to the next page, that was just before Moses died. So right. God gave oh, yeah, Moses the prophecy of the song that will be coming when Jesus is making his second return. And after that, Moses departed. He was not allowed to go to the promised land and he died. So that was the last testimony of Moses, the song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32. When Isa, the, the um, Jesus of the Muslims, comes to earth, he is not singing the song of Moses. He is not singing the song of the Lamb. So this proves that this and is Muslims not... Muslims are not singing at all. Yeah. Muslims don't sing. They don't sing. Muslims don't sing. So we have established with our sermon that the God of the Quran is not the God of the Bible. The Moses is not the Moses of the uh, Bible. The uh, Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. Um, the Abraham right. is not the Abraham no, no, no. of the Bible. The Abraham, um, the Isaacs and the Jacobs. The Jibril is not the Jibril of the Bible. So who are you worshipping Muslims? Following one man's testimony. 
I am not sure where to take this on uh, from here. Whether we should go into our conclusions. Yeah, should we do that? Yeah. 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 Would you like to go ahead? Yeah, can I, I, do, I do actually want to do something very briefly with two books. This is very important. These are the books. Crucifixion or crucifixion. I may do that. I'll do that bit again very briefly. I'm concluding here now. At Medidas words, quote, the Muslims believe this categorical Quranic statement, that's Surah 4157 from God. Hence he asks no questions and seeks no proof. This is the great Ahmed Medida saying they're asking no questions, seeking no proof for Surah 157. But immediately on the next page, he's calling the Christians to call their witnesses. And I'm going to look at this the next time. In one breath, he said that we don't need any proof. We're not interested in giving you any. But however, we're going to press you for some. And he, he goes on to say, you know, with his rhetoric, of saying that Christians have no proof. They can't prove anything of what they're saying. While he openly admits that he has none and doesn't want any. This is from a so called academic. This is shameless. You so, so many false statements. So, so, so hopefully next time, so hopefully next time I'm going to go to town on these two books, crucifixion as in the crucifixion or crucifixion as in science fiction. So he's saying it's a fiction. And the other one, the combat, the combat kit against Bible farmers. I'm going to look at these next time in detail. I'd, I'd like you to hold that because yeah. when you see Dawa done in the West, these are the two narratives that you see where the questions yeah. come these from. These are the books that they're uh, using. And, and next time when I and Brother Hudson do our debate, we're going to tackle these questions that are given against um, us Bible thumpers yes. and we're going to go into them These are and ensure, the best guy you got. ensure that we give the truth. Now, what God lies, I, I, because what you've picked on now is lies. How many gods do you believe in? How many God do you believe in? One. You believe in one God? You believe, you believe Jesus is the Son of God, no? Peace enough, peace enough. Huh? Yeah. Let's so get Jesus to the, is a prophet, yeah? Let's get to the that. conclusion. We can agree that Jesus is a prophet, yeah? So, Hello. this is the conclusion of what we've gone in. We've determined who Christ is and what the Messiah is, that Jesus is the Son of God, uh, fulfilling biblical prophecy. We've also defined what an Antichrist is. We've defined that Islam is a religion of the Antichrist. And you're gonna, you only know, need to look at 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, that states that any doctrine that does not acknowledge Jesus as Christ is not of God. So if it's not of God, it's of Satan. And Allah has proven to be Satan by hating the King of Kings on resurrection. Uh, Revelations chapter 19 verse 20 says that the beast will be cast down and the followers and those that receive the mark. Now, we have to ensure that the truth is always explained. Lies are not of God. Our God does not lie. Our God does not abrogate verses. Our God does not abrogate verses. Our God does not lie. And this is how we prove it. I'm going to read in my conclusion before Brother Hudson ends the whole debate. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 God is not human that he should lie not a human being that he should change his mind does not does he speak and then not act does he promise and not fulfill so there's no abrogation in the bible it all adds up every verse in the new testament adds up to the old Titus 1 verse 2 in the hope of eternal life which God he does not lie promise before the beginning of time. So the promises from the beginning, right. from the word of God have been fulfilled. First Samuel 15, chapter 15, verse 29. He who is of glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not human being that he should change his mind. Now this is people over a thousand years, different prophets, saying that God does not lie or change his mind. No abrogation with God. If anybody abrogates, he is not of God. This is very simple, clear teaching. Psalm 89 verse 35 by David. Once for, once for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. This is our God saying he does not lie. I don't need to say anything else. We call everyone to repentance, not just Muslims, all unbelievers. You, because this is what will happen. But the cowardly, you cannot be a coward. The unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, that believe in flying carpets with a ring. Our prophets are not magicians. Our prophets are not magicians. I repeat, Shamsi, hear what I'm saying. Idolaters and all liars, when you lie all the time, when you call Jesus not being God, you're calling God a liar because there's witnesses. First John chapter 5 says, whoever does not believe in Jesus' testimony is calling God a liar. 
If you are accusing our God of being a liar, you will get the eternal damnation. They will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So we call you to repentance. Humble your hearts. Pick up the Bible. The first epistle of John is very easy. 15 minutes. Learn the message of the Lord. We are not here to be your enemies. We're caught here to call people to repentance. I thank you for your audience and I'll leave Brother Hudson to make the concluding statements into what he feels is essential for the audience. Next week we're going to go back into the challenge in the apologetics argument. But today we needed to define who God is the Messiah, the Antichrist, and why we do not accept the God of the Muslims. The Gospel in a nutshell, 1 Corinthians 16. Conclusion. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you believe, if you, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel in a nutshell. I would like to thank everybody that's uh, the commenters, um, Soko Films obviously we're spending in this bad weather, uh, getting us, um, it's been a bit off tangent at some point, yeah, but we had a lot to cover. Yeah. Uh, next time, yeah. I think Brother Hudson, yes, because this was one I wanted mm. to deliver, yes. but Brother Hudson's going to take a, a cord and I'm going to work on his behalf because he's a stronger uh, person with the faith. He understands the scriptures better than I. But we're going to tackle the apologetics like the first video we did. Mm. This is our second uh, yes. uh, uh, yes. planned one. Mm. This is the third one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next one will be much uh, uh, better and concise. Mm. Um, Please, I like your criticism. It makes us improve and learn. We are learners, we're human, we know better than you. We also have mistakes, we also have um, dispositions, yes. but we can only learn if other people actually tell us what to do which is righteous. We give all glory to the Lord. Amen. We ask people, whether you're Muslim or Christian, pick up the good book. Amen. Really pick up this book. Read the New news. Testament. It is very essential. This is the only way to understand things. If you just are a lukewarm Christian, it is time to repent. Pick up your Bible and learn. If you're Muslim, don't say you believe in the prophets and don't and you don't read their account. Because if you believed in the prophets, you read their account. There were no excuses. Because if you refuse to accept the account of the Lord, your your future is eternal damnation. And that is why we spend our time in this evening in this bad weather to preach the gospel. It's to try and save as many people from eternal damnation. We are not here to become YouTube heroes. We're not here to become popular. I don't I don't even have a YouTube channel to subscribe. I only listen to comment I don't put videos I am not interested in fame I'm not interested in anything we're here to do the word of the word of the Lord and all glory goes to God anyone enlightened the glory goes to God not to us to God give him the glory give him the praise because it will testify better for you on judgment that you pray and yes we give the glory to Jesus Christ our Lord because you should exalt the Son as you exalt the Father that is what the Bible tells Father honor the Son as you honor the Father thank you thank you so much for films support soccer films they're very good yes